Lewis. You can see the screen? Yep. All right. So we will select our Carolina Panthers. Now, I haven't done one of these since all of the trades, so I am not 100% sure if they have updated all the drafts. I think that Pro Football Network is usually pretty good about that. Um, shout out to them, man. They're a, they got a bunch of really good guys that work for them, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So we'll see how this shakes out. We get down here. They offer trades. What do you think about that? I, I don't really want to drop from 33 to 60, even if I get that second rounder. How about you? I agree. Okay. 61, 73. Again, it just doesn't move me enough, right? Right. So on the board, man, Keon Coleman just staring at you. <laughs> um, do you want to see any particular position groups? Let's look at the wide receivers that are available here. Keon Coleman, Vlad McConkey, Troy Franklin would be the three ranked the highest. Um, mm. Anyone knows me, they know that this is where my eyes went to immediately. <laughs> Jalen Polk. Oh, really? I didn't but, know you uh, Yeah, it, it, I, it's, a, it's a secret <laughs> that I really haven't let everyone know yet, um, but, but it'll be out there eventually. But I will be completely you honest. Keon Coleman is ahead of him in my ranks. He's the only wide receiver on that board mm. that is ahead of him in my ranks. Um, do you think that there's another position, maybe center, Zach Frazier? Mm. Defense you know, off topic, you should off topic, you should definitely invite Jalen Polk to your to your show, man. Oh, I should. I wonder what he's up to, you know, late nights on Wednesdays and Thursdays, if he would have any interest in coming on. Tell him you are the the, the number one you're the president of the fan club and you'd like yeah. to have, you'd like to have him on your show and do you think awesome. that's a good enough spiel do you think that will pull him <laughs> <up>? <laughs> so, some guys do that some guys not, i mean you yeah. also are on cat crave so you have some you have some credentialness to yourself you're not like Wait, a, a the worst that happens though right like if i if i offer him and he's like man no thank you then i'm just back to square one and i'm like i'm still rooting for you i'm still your favorite fan mm -hmm. right now maybe another segment for your show in addition to this or that should be like shoot your shot and then today's shoot your shot challenge is you got to invite Jalen Polk. Did you just become my manager? <laughs> that is incredible. I'm or my creative director of the show. I, I'm saying this not as a manager, but as a friend that cares about you. I, again, I like Jalen Polk just because you like him. And so just to like, <laughs> see you interact with him would like, I'd be must see, must see YouTube, must see podcast for me. Hey girl, I feel like there are people that, want the Panthers to select Jalen Polk just because they're worried about like my well being if that we don't <laughs> <book> him. <laughs> I mean, um, that's also so part of it too. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to see me like really just fall off that ledge, right? Like they, they <laughs> want me to stick around so they want Jalen Polk in the process blue. Um what do you think here though, man? Like is is Keon Coleman just a very obvious pick here? Um can I see like who's at uh, edge and corner just out of curiosity. Yes. Edge you got Darius Robinson. So no chop. Okay. A decent guys. Then, yeah, chop is gone. Chop went, let's see, 25th. Okay. JPJ went 24. That's another guy that I would absolutely run to the podium. Yep. AD Mitchell at 30. Xavier Worthy went right in front of us. Your, your other guy. You got it. You got to invite him to, to the show too. Xavier Worthy, man. Right. Man, I that would be fun, wouldn't it? What if I could have Xavier Worthy and Jalen Polk on here and just say, yeah. with the 33rd and 39th pick, my guests are. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about uh, corner? Corner, let's look at it. TJ Tampa and it's Ray Kestraw, a good ball player. But I don't yeah. know where, where I run into issues is, is the value there, right? Yep. Yep. I think. And you're going to get another shot at 39 since we have pick yeah. 39 now. I think if the I other, had to make it, oh, go ahead. Do the wild card for me though, Kingsley, Sue, and Mataya here. Mm -hmm. I know that we say that we're set with Icky. Mm -hmm. If Icky doesn't work out this season, right? Like if it is just a catastrophe with him at left, tackle, do you want to have that answer already on the roster possibly? And so that next season when you go into it and if you have another high draft pick and you have a first round, maybe you could get that premier edge that you can't get in this, in this draft. Mm. Yeah, it's a good thought. I mean, I know there's, I think you're a fan of Jordan Morgan also. So I am. those are, those are interesting op options, but, but mm -hmm. <sighs> would you go key on over lad personally? <sighs> you like lad more, don't you? Yeah. I mean, how about this thinking of it this way for me? Like, mm -hmm. who do you think is least likely to fail? 
<laughs> and that's a bad way yeah, to that's fair. like which is least likely to fail and so i yeah. feel like keon coleman is his ceiling is so high yes yeah. the his bust potential is so high also that mcconkey like in on what air like I forgot who posted. I post. I retweeted today. Somebody put weaknesses for Lad McConkey. None. <laughs> like he may not be like that superstar like Ken Coleman. Yeah. But like you, you see Lad failing. Like what can he? Other, other than injuries, like what would Lad? You know, how could Lad fail? <laughs> right. So what about um, the what about the possibility? And I don't know. I haven't checked to see. Um, what about the possibility though that if you were to select Keon, right? Mm-hmm. Lad is ranked forty two on this simulator. And we pick again at 39. Is there the possibility to double up on both of them if you were to go key on here? Or would you prefer to go lad to make sure you get the guy that you really like, right? The guy that you covet, you have conviction for. And this is something that I think is a good practice to do is to have conviction when you're looking at a player and go with that guy. Um, I don't know, man. I think I could go with lad there. What do you think? I think, you'll get, I think we'll both get raked over the coals if we have Keon Coleman sitting right there at 33 and we just walk away from him <laughs> with all the big body receivers that Canales has had success with. Now, and yeah. I, I want to say this about that because I see the argument online about, you know, he just has a preference for these big body receivers. I, I don't think that's it. I think that just in every situation that he's been in, he's been able to find a lot of success with big body receivers. So if he's seen that happen, and he knows that that's attainable and he knows how to scheme that up and how to reach those points. It does make me pretty comfortable with adding that kind of player because we don't have that on the roster remotely. So like, I do like that idea. The other thing that people like, I I tried to hint at it online is that what that Dave Canales does have a Super Bowl ring when he won the Super Bowl with the Seahawks. His two best rec- the receivers that had the most targets that were the most uh-huh. that, that, that had the most production in his offense were Doug uh-huh. Baldwin and oh gosh I forgot the other name I'm thinking about but anyway they're both under six feet and so he wants Lockett? to roll with was it Lockett or was it Dion Branch I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look it up but anyway, long, those, yeah yeah but long story short is that like he won a Super Bowl without a big I mean he had Sidney Rice at that time yeah. but he did not need a big body receiver to win the Super Bowl, And so I wonder if that's yeah. in his head him saying that like, Oh, I don't need a big, bo- I, I've done it without one. Why do I need to, Very good point. You know? but he did have DK Metcalf. He does have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. And so, you know, I could see, I could see both. I could see arguments for both ways. If he wants to go lad McConkey, John Tay Johnson, and just destroy people by being with people that are super open, that can also mm-hmm. win down the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, more power to him. But I, I think like, I, I agree with you. I don't, I, I, I see that people think that he is automatically associated with a big body receiver, but I don't think it's like a necessity. Agreed. But for the sake of this one, I think that we both have kind of almost talked circles around lad just being the guy for, (laughs) for right now. Right. Like in, in just in this situation right now, lad McConkey gives you that, that fast there, that quick pass game. If you have Deontay Johnson and lad McConkey, lad McConkey is not like strictly a slot guy. Like that, that isn't also like really important part to mention here. Just because you take Lad doesn't mean that you're only going to be throwing seven yard passes for the entire season because you have Lad and and Deontay Johnson. They both have vertical ability. They are three level route runners. They can do the things that you want any receiver to do. They can also just really, really excel in that underneath and intermediate level. I like that. I think in today's NFL, that makes a lot of sense. So let's do it. Let's go Lad McConkey. By the way, it was um, Golden Tate was the other one. Golden Golden Tate. Tate And Doug Baldwin. How did I just completely like whiff on that name? This was this was 2013, 2014. So they're talking yep. about eleven years ago. So yep. you're good. Oh man, that trade right there is very yeah. interesting. Pick thirty nine and two forty for fifty six and sixty nine. Hmm. You got Lab McConkey, so then you would grab two more top seventy five picks in exchange for that two forty that you just got in the um, Deontay Johnson trade. Does that move you at all? Or would you just want to stay with where you are? Uh, For the sake of this exercise, I'm willing to stay where we are and see like, what does the board look like with our, with our current picks? So best available. And you know what? I do realize, uh, no, we're good. Yep. We're good. Um, Best available. Well, we don't need a quarterback. 
I don't know. I love Christian Haynes. He's been one of my guys and Jordan Morgan also both have been my guys for Mm -hmm. a large part of this pre-draft process. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you allocate this pick to either one of them when there are the guys like Darius Robinson, Zach Frazier. Um, Again, when you look at the cornerbacks, the same two are still there. I'm also really high on Max Melton. Um, Peyton Wilson is another name that you could risk waiting until 65 and maybe he's there. I don't know that the Josie Jewell um, signing necessarily moves me off of drafting a guy like Peyton Wilson. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. I think that Josie Jewell, if I, if I understood correctly, like he's, he's there for two ish years. And so mm-hmm. he's not a, he's not, you know, the, the guy, he's not Robert Hunt for five years, a hundred million dollars. Yeah. And so yeah. you wouldn't necessarily pass on someone who has that potential. If you think that he could be the feature at, at the linebacker position and Dan Morgan himself was a linebacker. And so if he had to quote unquote overpay or invest in a guy and he says like, this is the guy I could see mm-hmm. him going for a linebacker early. And what if, what if Shaq, when he comes back from his injury, what if Shaq isn't a hundred percent? What if he doesn't get back to where he was? Then you're talking about it's Josie Jewell against the world, right? He's Scott Pilgrim at that point. That's true. That's true. So what do you think? You want to see a certain position? Um, so, I, so going backwards, just to like, we see Keon Coleman went after Lyle McConkey. Another combo that we could have thought about was Keon. Co- I, I should have thought about this before he made the pick. We could have gone Keon Coleman 33 and we could have gone Ricky Pearsall 39 if we wanted to do that, that combo. Mm. And so I think Ricky Pearsall could be just as good as, as Lad McConkey. I think Lad McConkey has, has obviously unbelievable skills and, 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 mm-hmm. We've seen the footage of him getting separation. He's like one of the highest percentiles in separation in this class. Mm-hmm. But I don't think Ricky Purcell is that far behind. I don't think he's like around less than Lemon Conkey. So if I can get yeah. a key on Coleman and package that with a with a, with a Ricky Pearsall, like that would have been an awesome duo as well. Well, so with that train of thought too, though, if I personally were to tell you that I have Jalen Polk ranked as my wide receiver five and Lad McConkey ranked as my wide receiver seven, I think is where he is for me. Mm-hmm. We could have the five and seven receivers on my big board, at least <laughs> or just back to back. If you wanted to dip, d- double dip on wide receiver, that's probably how I would go to be completely honest, because I don't think Jalen Polk can play at all, man. He's not, he's not a one alignment, one, one note kind of player. Like he can do everything and he plays Aaron Duncan said it on the show, man. He plays like a defender with his hair on fire. And I absolutely love that, man. Um, So I would have no problem double dipping at receiver there. But if you think that there's another position that you would prefer to go, um, I'm all open to it. The only one I would think about is is Zach Frazier, only because there's a glaring need, um, just so that people know because they're not aware. Um, Austin Corbett has played some center, but not that much. And his contract is up at the end of this year. And so it would be nice to start early and to get somebody like in the system. So let's just say he, you move on from corporate next year, you have like this bona fide center. I think yeah. that was a missing piece. And so like you have awesome left guard, right guard, right tackle, left tackle. And so like, there's only one missing piece. And if we're going to invest everything into Bryce young, you might as well yes. complete the, like I said, Zach Frazier could be the final infinity stone for the Dan Morgan offensive line gauntlet. Well, you're talking me into it, man, because I'm going to say <laughs> the, the conversation around Austin Corbett has played center before. The only thing that I can find, and like he has, he's he's taken snaps there, right? He's he's taken reps. It's been in preseason and training camp. He's never taken a regular season snap from anything that I can find. So he's never actually, and what I was going to say about that is that if you draft Zach Frazier, there is a chance or even a likelihood that in camp, they go in that position battle, that Zach Frazier comes out on top. He could just be a better center right now than Austin Corbett is. Zach Frazier has played center his entire life. He's been a wrestler, right? Like Mm -hmm. it is in his DNA to do that position, to play that position. He plays it well. And he's got that attitude that would work really well with Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis, I think. Um, So you may have talked me into it. If you're on board, I'm on board. All right, let's do it. Let's just see what happens because I don't think you get a Zach Frazier level player immediately later on in the draft. So I think you get two immediate starters right there, right? At Mm -hmm. positions where you do want to upgrade the team. Mm-hmm. We'll just skip the trades for now on to to just yeah. save a little bit of time. How about that? Yeah, let's do it. So, the overall, Michael Hall Jr., interior defensive lineman out of Ohio State, a little bit undersized, but very disruptive. Jadavion Sanders and Ben Sinnott, who is my tight end too. Um, Peyton Wilson's still on the board. Braden Fisk, 
big time com- big time combine guy. I don't know what the um, A. Sean Robinson signing does to looking at interior defenders. I don't yep. think it should really move you off of it entirely. To be to be honest, um, mm-hmm. edges Brandon Dorless is there. Really long wingspan kid out of Oregon. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like one of those combo players too, man. Where you're going to be yep. able to move him around. Yeah, I feel like San Francisco 49ers would love him. I don't know why he just seems like a 49er. <laughs> what do you think? Any positions you want to look at? There's your guy Ricky Pearsall. Yeah, I, I'm looking There's at another Xavier. position too that safety I think has to be considered a little bit because we don't know yeah. what we're doing with safety, and this yeah. isn't a terrific safety class, I don't think. But there are guys that I like. Jaden Hicks, I'm very high on. Kalen Bullock, if when you talk about what Dave Canales has said about on his his philosophy of football is centered around the football, is centered around mm-hmm. the ball. You protect it on offense, you take it away on defense. Kalen mm-hmm. Bullock, man, that's a guy that he wants to take the ball away. He's a ball hawk, um, mm-hmm. so he could he yes, could work there too. I, I never saw this before, but that little report that you pulled up, it did say he yeah. would be perfect for a Vic Fangio scheme. There you go. Which is basically... Well, look, projects extremely well to the modern NFL defenses that have embraced Vic Fangio's scheme. Hmm. Oh, very interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Anybody but stand nice. out to you there? Not necessarily stand out, but I saw Xavier Leggett, and so just something to keep in mind is that they had a gigantic contingent at his pro day. He's been yep. on Joe Pearson, uh, Joe Persons, um, the profile of him, the Panthers have done a profile. So like, I, I feel this energy towards Xavier Leggett. Let's say I would pick him, but I wouldn't be surprised if they, they went, you know, we talked about a combo. I know you like Jalen Polk, um, yeah. but a Xavier Leggett, Lad McConkey combo also sounds like a good pairing it of, does. Of, of, of a big. And, and so maybe like for this home. exercise too, I, I, I don't think that we're far off with having Lad McConkey and Zach Frazier as the first two picks. I don't think it would be far off from a realistic trajectory of what the Panthers would do. Maybe less yeah. so than what you and I would do here. Maybe this is a fairly realistic situation for the Panthers. And in that scenario, I think you bring up a really good point about Xavier Leggett, that maybe he would be the guy that draws their attention. The only person I think that would potentially lure them would be Peyton Wilson, because I think that yeah. they do really like Peyton Wilson as well. Um, they've talked about him. Keekly has waxed poetically yeah. about him. We know Dan Morgan's a linebacker. And we should have started this in the mock. So this is my, uh, we should have given the context to this mock draft. Like I'm a big believer for me personally yeah. to make mock drafts to try to predict what the Panthers will do, because I'm not that guy that watches all 22 on all players and watch like five games of each guy. So like, I know this and this is the ranking. I have guys that I like, but I don't yeah. know, you know, you bring up guys like there's could be a, a sleeper that I've never seen. And all of a sudden he's like the star. And so like, I don't want to put myself in positions like, Oh, I know all these players, but I try to, my, where I got my money, where I got super popular very early in Twitter, was like I predicted like tea leaves, like just the way that they're talking. I think the Panthers are going this yeah. route, and then they end up picking that player. And so I like doing mock drafts, trying to predict what the Panthers will do versus like I'm the I'm the draft guru and I know exactly what t- what teams should do. So that's that's the way. That so I'm do you so do you feel then that if you were going to take that strategy and let's take that strategy like that, I think that's perfect, man. I love doing that. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel like Xavier Leggett is the guy? I think it'd be Leggett or or Peyton Wilson, <laughs> and it's hard because, and this is me just just waxing poetic about you know you talked about Luke Keekley and Dan Morgan like there's mm-hmm. just too much too much uh, energy around like yep. Luke Keekley, Dan Morgan this 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 what do you call it this this legacy this this lineage of linebackers yes. I could picture Dan Morgan saying I like these two but give me linebacker <laughs> over a wide receiver but I could see them go either way. If what they're doing, focusing on the offense, is their plan of attack, um, and what Dave Canales said about not having emotional attachments, and he's going to base his team off of who's good enough and who's not good enough, mm-hmm. there is a chance that if Jonathan Mingo does not develop, he is not going to find himself in favor of the coaching staff. Very similar trajectory almost to the way that Terrace Marshall Jr. fell into, right? ton of talent. I don't think there's denying the talent, but if they don't work out, they're not going to Dave Canales does not seem intent on just putting someone out there because they cost a second rounder to the previous regime. I don't think that's his MO. Um, with that noted, I think if you're going into it with Lad McConkey and Deontay Johnson, I think you need a legitimate threat. Um, a, a big body threat, somebody that can be a little bit more of a physical presence. Um, and, and I think that Leggett gets a bad rep, but I think that he can develop into a very full player. So I think I'm going to say Xavier Leggett, let's go for it. That's where all the smoke is right now. 
Um, it also makes a ton of sense, and he's got a lot of uh, reason to be picked here. Yeah. I, and I could, we could argue that like maybe the energy in the building is like, let's just make our, like the way they've done off season is like, let's put all yeah. of our energy, all of our eggs into the offense and we'll figure out yes. defense whenever. Correct. I agree. <laughs> and, and it almost seems like that though. Right. And if, and if yeah. that is what their energy is, we should try to follow suit here with that. Yep. Yep. All right. Looking at it now. Um, I think that what I would look at here, honestly, I, this is where I find a lot of value at pick one Oh one is in cornerbacks. Mm. Um, Kyrie Jackson and Cam Hart are my two favorite prospects here. I think that both of them have cornerback one possibilities. Mm. Um, Kyrie Jackson was a transfer out of Alabama, ended up playing at Oregon, really put some good tape out last year, I thought, at Oregon. His length and speed allows him to recover if he doesn't win initially. And that's a big thing I think that I like for just about any position, but specifically in the secondary, because they're at a disadvantage playing that position against a wide receiver. The wide receiver knows what he's doing. The secondary is trying to figure it out, right? Mm. Um, I like his ability, and I like Cam Hart, especially in his own. Um, I think he fits Evero's thing to a T, Cam Hart. Um, so those would be two positions that I really do like there at that pick. Jaden Hicks is also there. Man, I love Jaden Hicks. I think that Jaden Hicks reminds me in the tiniest way of like a more fluid Jeremy Chin. There is like this little bit of their play style where he's clearly a downhill player. And like, that is what he's going to make his money for first initially, but he's also shown some real ability um, from an athleticism standpoint to not have problems in, in pass coverage. Um, so those, those would be the two guys that I would probably lean into okay. would okay. be a cam Hart, Jaden Hicks. What are you thinking? Who's that? Who's that edge? I'm just curious. I'm always just keeping an eye on. I always find there's like a, well, Jonah Ellis is interesting. Mm. I always find there's yep. like a, a drop after Marshawn yeah. Nealand. I think yep. that there is a pretty significant drop. I would, I would agree with you with the corners. I haven't watched Ky like I don't know who would fit Dan Morgan's mentality better. I've only watched mm -hmm. Cam Hart because of the senior bowl. Um, mm -hmm. So like I, I like Cam Hart, but that's just, that's only because I haven't watched enough Kyrie Jackson. Sure. Center. Since we talked about, oh no, we already drafted. We drafted Zach Frazier. That's right. Yeah, but I will say so, that, like, if we if we passed on um, Zach Frazier, someone that we, I think you mentioned it last week. Also, Bo Limmer is another guy that's probably Bo Limmer and Tanner Bordellini. Absolutely yeah. love him as well. So both would probably be like a Dan Morgan guy. Uh, if yeah. Yes, I, I agree. Um, okay. Well, I think that if you don't take corner here, I think that you are picking a little bit less from the top at that point. Right. Yeah. What do you think? Should we go cam Hart? Uh, I would lean on you if you like cam Hart or Kyrie Jackson better. Another thing that I, I, I do want to point out here now that we're in round yeah. four on day three, I think it's very common for fans to be like, Oh, we need to hit on every pick. We need to, uh -huh. you know, blah, blah, blah. When you get to day three, like the, the chances of actually hitting are very, very, it's almost like a lottery ticket. And so like, for me, I like on day three, guys who are like high upside, high, you know, high potential. You like, like to take a swing. Play, yeah. Why would you play it safe here? Like you're, you have nothing to lose. It's almost house money. And so I don't know all these players as well, but like, that's what I liked. I like to see like the high Raz guys. I'd like to see guys who like, like you said, could be potential CB one. Why would I take a safe CB three? I might right. as well take the potential of someone who could be a CB one. Absolutely. This is another player. I think that would fit that mold here. Mm. Mason Smith, defensive tackle out of LSU. This is a big old dude. You see right here when they mention his frame may be the most frightening since Sean Oakman. If you remember who Sean Oakman was at a Baylor, yep. Yep. just massive dude. He had like the yep. really intimidating face mask, right? Yep. Like, like you just viral picture. Yeah, that's right, man. <laughs> he was just a big dude. So I do think that if that's the train of thought that he's a guy that could fit that a little bit. Mm. Um, but for the sake of this in our team, I'm going to go Kyrie Jackson because I think that he has a little bit more flexibility in what he can do. And I think that he's a little bit of a bigger athlete. Then uh, Cam Hart is. I like Cam Hart a lot, and he probably fits right now what EJ wants to do. But if EJ's gone, I think Kyrie Jackson gives you a little bit of flexibility after that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. Mm. And now we got a little bit of a wait, and we got back to back picks here next. This is a really interesting wow. thing when you get to back to back picks, right? Yeah. Marshawn Lloyd. I love him. Love him. Where I have questions with Marshawn is his ball security and the way that Canales yeah. emphasizes it. It makes me a bit nervous. 
Yeah. I could see them lean the other way because of just because of that. Correct. Um, this guy right here, like him, but I don't know <laughs> that I'd take him. Well, maybe you take him right now or 142. What position do you think you would look at here? Again, I We've like got, high, high potential yeah. guys. Where are our picks? We got Ladd, Fraser, Xavier Leggett, Kyrie Jackson. The all all dog team, right? All dogs, man. <laughs> I love that. Feisty. Um, I don't. I don't, I don't know. I, w- I would probably go again. We got two back to back picks, and so it makes things a little bit interesting. That you gotta you gotta think about like maybe I go offense defense. Maybe I go yeah. You know, trenches skill player. Like you could you could kind of combo what you want to do here. I think running back does make some sense here. Um. Because 240, so basically what, what I would look at here too, these are your home run swings that you think actually have a chance of connecting with, right? Like mm. there's there's a chance you can connect on these. Yeah. 240, I'm not trying to say that like nothing can happen. We've seen guys that are drafted very late that turn into yeah. good players. The likelihood yeah. there Rock pretty. is slim. Yeah, right. So I'm not going to bank on that 240. I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, I don't want to take a running back now because I might could get the guy out of you know San Diego third state. Yeah. Uh, at 240, right? Yeah. Like, um, I think that we've got to upgrade that running back room a little bit. And I, I'm not sure that Miles Sanders is on the roster at the start of the season. I don't know. Mm. Um, that's just kind of another one of those gut feels based on the, if the tape isn't good enough, we're not going to hold you here. Yeah. Um, the, the financial ramifications there maybe mm-hmm. prevent that from happening. But I think that they're going to want to upgrade that, that room. Mm. The other thing that we haven't that you talked about last week that we haven't talked about is is Mo Kamara, which is mm-hmm. uh, uh, Love uh, him. almost like a designated pass rusher. We haven't yep. we haven't talked about him that much, but I love Mo. he's a, he's a kind of a a, a skill set that the Panthers don't have on their roster right now. I know I, I just tweeted this this morning is that they have they've shown a preference for two sixty pound edges, so so maybe Kamara is not on their radar. But um, it was just something or maybe I, he I, is like a pass rusher, or maybe he is. Yeah. Maybe he is because of the difference that he brings there and the contrast. And if they get themselves into those, you know, third and long, obvious pass rush situations, do they bring a specialist in? It's just going to cause a little bit of havoc, right? Yeah. I like that. Jack- Look, I would yeah. love to go Mo Kamara. You know, I'm a big Mo guy. <laughs> yeah. And Brendan Jackson's I, another guy that, um, they, Dane Brugler, who's a, who's a, a big draft analyst at the athletic. He had talked about who are, I, I, I another pro tip here. I've been looking at who the lions are looking at because I think the lions culture is similar to what Dan Morgan wants to accomplish or wants to emulate. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Dane Brugler said, answered a guy's question on Twitter, like who would fit the lions culture. And he mentioned Brennan Jackson. And so I don't know him okay. so well, but I do know that mentality wise, he's probably a good fit for what uh, did we have a meeting with Brennan Jackson? Did we meet him at like the senior bowl or something like that? That's a good question. So another thing, <laughs> another context about draft strategy in terms of, trying to predict what they do. Um, also on Twitter, black and blue maniac, uh, shout out to Gene. Um, we were, we would track, um, combine, combine meetings, pro bowl, me- uh, senior bowl meetings, all these things. And it turns out at the end of the day, it all devolved into like who came in for a 30 visits. And so I haven't <laughs> paid enough attention to who they meet at the combine. Dan Morgan in his press conference said, I'm trying to meet with everybody at the combine. And so these are 15 minute interviews and meetings. And right. so, I have more weight if that if that makes sense to those who come into Carolina because for sure. in the last couple of years, basically if they came in for a visit, they're they're probably going to be drafted or everyone who was drafted had a visit yeah. to Carolina. That's fair. So let's go one of them. Um, let's go Mo or Brennan. Who do you like there? I like Mo Camara as a pass rusher. Let's do it. Brennan Jackson, just as a heads up, is probably like that bigger sized edge that fits what they've been trying to attack in, in free agency. What's stopping us from going Mo and Brennan back to bat? Mm. You know, one thing we haven't talked about in a, I know this is a jumbo sized episode, but we never talked about the visits that, <laughs> that Jadavian Clowney, Chase Young, and yeah. DJ Wanham are coming to Carolina. So yeah. I'm sure that would influence if we go back to back edges, if they end up, Correct. Uh, as Joe Person mentioned, and, and, Mike K mentioned they might go multiple, they might sign multiple edges this free agency. So that might color totally fair. what we do here. Yeah, that's totally fair. Um, and, and, and again, it is tough to kind of do these kinds of 
super hypothetical exercises when we don't know where we are actually on draft night with roster composition. Yeah. Um, but that, right, that so would then, be fun if we had to wait all the way till the end. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's why these things are so entertaining, though, man. Like, yeah. you want to kind of see where you are right now, engage yeah. it, so that when that day comes and those players are there and like, and, and, and there's still an opportunity to draft one, you can get really excited about it, man. It's like, dude, yeah. I've been a fan of his for months, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. we mock um, drafted him. <laughs> yeah, I mock drafted him like 7,000 times. <laughs> it was an A, B, C, or D. <laughs> um, do you have a position you want to look at here? I think this is the last like really meaningful pick. Yeah. Uh, We've gone three offense in a row, now two defense. Tight end is a position I think that we have got to be looking at upgrading. you got Jaheim Bell. Um, good pass catching tight end out of Florida State. Yep. Um, Eric All, the most maybe the most appealing thing about anyone that doesn't know Eric All is where he played college, Iowa. <laughs> Iowa tight ends are like ten out of nine times they're going to hit. Right? Like it just feels yes. like that lately. I will because we're 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 running short on time and because we've talked uh-huh. about different positions. I'm going to actually lean towards Eric All. For those who aren't familiar with Eric All, he started in Michigan, then went to the, the tight end factory, like you said, in Iowa. He is a perfect, like, let me invest now, and he might pay off later. He had a very serious injury in the season, and so yep. he's kind of been being slept on. And so at this late in the game, with this late of a draft pick, why not pick somebody that, like, maybe next year or later in the season, he becomes a star, and you invest Absolutely. very like very lightly at the beginning and let it pay off versus, like, getting someone whose ceiling might be just a backup. Uh, it was a back injury. Is that correct? That I don't remember. I just remember he was out. Like he has a significant injury, and that's why people are are, gotcha. are fading him. All right. So then our final pick. Um, what kind of dart you want to throw at the board here? Um, offense. Let's see. Running back. Or Jordan's yeah. solid. Rasheen Ali was a nice performer um, at the Senior Bowl. We missed that on on our George Halani. We did, man. And I really, I tell you what, George Helani, I, and I'm serious about that though, man, that's a real prospect, man. I think that he's going to make a team very happy and they're going to take him at a, a, a real discounted draft selection. Yeah, that's yeah. a good ball player. If, for those that are hearing Edgar say he missed our George Helani, uh, George went to the high school that Edgar was the vice principal of. And when I started posting about being a very big George Helani fan and, and how I felt that he was a sleeper, Edgar was very happy to hear me uh, saying nice things about him because he had nothing but even nicer inside information to say about George Alani. Yeah. It, it's crazy hearing other people talk about him since I've known him as a, as a high school student, but he's, right. I, I'll just keep saying it. He's salt of the earth, super. He's, he's, he's a, a grinder and like a, a hard nosed player on the field, but off the field, he's like a yes, sir. No, sir. Super respectful. Like you would think that these high level, high end elite high school athletes would have an ego. Uh, George Holland has zero of it, and he's like just just the best person I could I could want for a locker room like the Panthers. I love that man. That's so awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. how about we do this guy? It's it's pick two forty. Um, Anim oh. Dankwa, six foot seven, three hundred fifty three pounds, an absolute unit of a right tackle. Oh. I look at that and I say, Taylor Moten is not going to be here forever. This is a shot in the dark. You're not looking for someone that's going to contribute right away necessarily. This is like when you get to the tail end of the second round of the NBA draft and you draft a guy in Europe that's going to stay for a couple of years. <laughs> but in three years, man, maybe you get yourself a rotational ball player, right? I kind of feel that way about pick 240, especially right now. We haven't allocated any kind of resources to the offensive tackle position. It's yeah. a very good offensive tackle class. Ethan Driscoll is another guy that I would look at, 6'8", 313. Yeah. Um, you talk about like taking a chance on a guy that has the physical ability to be a, a difference maker, right? Yeah. I would take a chance on one of those guys. Um, Frank Crum, I don't know any much Crum. about it. I haven't watched this, but he just looked like a guy with the, he he like a mullet. I, I saw him at the combine. And Wasn't then, he the one that gave the interview with Stacey Dales um, that was just absolutely terrific? Uh, I missed it. I just saw what he looks like. Yeah. I was like, oh, that guy looks like a, a player. Yeah, he does, man. The only position I want to look at before you go is, is long yep. snapper. Um, there's this really good long snapper I like. I'm just, I'm just fine with you. 
Damn it, Edgar. Damn it. We made it almost an entire episode not talking about drafting a long snapper. We didn't even have any kind of reference about Matt Rule. I really thought this was going to happen for the first time in my history of being on a podcast. <laughs> Maybe in the sixth like, round, but now we probably missed out on the best long snappers by two. We did. Yeah, he's off the board, man. That's that's yeah. the big problem here. That's a, that's a mistake. Yeah. I mean, J.K. Jansen's getting up there in age. You might, might as well think you know, long term here. I wonder if Frank Crum can long snap. <laughs> All right, well, let's go Frank Crum, man. I remember his interview. He looks the part. Um, for for the sake of getting all of us out of this two hour episode, I look. I, I'm not even upset about it because I have enjoyed every single second of doing this. Um, this has been a ton of fun. I'll download that result sheet right there. We'll post it out tomorrow when the episode comes back. People tell us how awful or how terrific we did. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts. Um, but again, this was from the Panthers' perspective. This had nothing to do with us. So please don't blame us. This was all Panthers' front office. We should have led with that, but I guess when we tweet it, we'll say we were trying to embody what we think the Panthers will do. Like, I think that's, well, and you more, know, really, man, like the likelihood yeah. of how many people have stuck around for an hour and 50 minutes to find out that explanation is probably <laughs> relatively low. Um, but I've got fingers crossed, man, that we were interesting enough that people saw this thing all the way through because I think that it was worth it, man. I, Edgar, I'm a huge fan of you, man. Thank you very much for your time. You've you've got your uh, one year old at home. You've got dad duties. You've had a, a work day. You have all your obligations and responsibilities as a awesome dude and man that you are. And you still took some time to come here and and mess around with a knucklehead like me. And I appreciate that, man. Like 100. percent I look forward to all of your work that you have going on. If you ever get the urge to jump on another little startup podcast, man, please. Don't hesitate to shoot me a message. Thanks, man. That, that's too kind. I mean, like, I, I, I honestly believe, like, the energy you put out in the world will come back to you. And so, like, I know this sounds, this sounds like, like, man crushing, but, like, that you recognize what I do, like, the, the, the very meaningless stuff that I do, but it means a lot to me. Like, I'm pretty sure that means that you are a good dude as well. And so, like, I've always loved their interactions. And I think that maybe not we're gonna have tons of numbers that watch two hours but like the people who will watch the full two hours like they're probably yeah. good dudes too and appreciate what we do and i think that's who i do it for because i'm not i'm lucky i'm not in the business to, to i'm not a youtuber i'm not trying to make tons of money or to get clicks right. but i just like to meet and engage with great people like you and like to me that makes it all worth it 100 percent, and that's pretty much the basis of the bow body show do it the way that you want to do it do it why you want to do it and with the people that you want to do it with right and uh, I think that you were a absolute perfect second guest for the Bow Body Show, man. Edgar, thank you for your time, man. Get out of here. Go spend some time with your family, your kid. Do the things that you uh, are, are more inclined to, to enjoy doing. <laughs> Thanks. But I will say, I thought the show was about business. I thought that's what this whole show was. Well, yeah, but it's business with like a B I Z in U S. You know what I mean? It's like that's a whole different kind of business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I fit that you, description very well then. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, like uh, I, I had an idea, this really great idea of creating a blank easel, and at the end of every episode, we were just going to make an acronym. Um, <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet, how to actually do that, but if I ever do figure that out, and it's something that everyone else thinks is stupid, I'm going to come back to you and see if you'll at least come on and make an acronym with me. Yeah, and make me one promise too. Shoot your shots to some people. Like you would be surprised. Like you have, you know, you have a presence. You're growing. You got your show. Even these guys that we looked at in the seventh round, they'll probably, you know, they'll probably be interested. You know, they want to get their name and their and their buzz out there. And so, I've had a chance to interview people when I was part of Cat Scratch Reader, Cat Scratch Reader, and other outlets. Mm -hmm. And so, like, maybe we can't catch a big fish like Jalen Polk, but some of those guys that were looking at the seventh round, people that you like. Let me see if I can get George Halani on for you. Um, but there's definitely, uh, you know, there's definitely you definitely are starting to have a presence and like. I think you could you could you could throw your weight around and, and get some get some people who would like love to interact with you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. you're just so nice, man. Seriously. Like I could do this every single day with you, man. If you ever get tired of doing all the awesome work that you do over there in California <laughs> and you just want to talk to me, I'm around, man. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I I will promise that I'll reach out to George and see if we could we can get him on and we could do one together. Now we're talking, man. That's the power of networking right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Edgar Salmingo Jr. I appreciate you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I appreciate you too. 
All right, it's been two hours. I highly doubt a lot of you stuck around. Maybe you broke this off into a couple different pieces, though, right? Like, maybe you listened to a little bit on your um, on your commute to work, and then you listen to a little bit on your lunch break. And then you go home, you take care of your family the way that Edgar does so well, and you listen to a little bit before you go to sleep. I appreciate anyone for listening for as long as you did or as little as you did. And until next time, Ricky Reigns for the Bow Body Show. Enjoy your night.